Shalom Maki. I want to give all praise down and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash for allowing me to do another lesson. Yahweh, who the world inwardly calls God, Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world inwardly calls Jesus Christ, and there's no God beside them. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for being faithful witnesses to the Holy Spirit and Shalom to the elect, whom the most high have given ears to hear. And it's gonna be a quick hit. It's gonna be a quick hit going into um this article. Um Russian standoff, US announces huge military buildup in Europe, including F-35 squadrons and troops on Putin's borders as World War Three tension rises. You know? And um we in those times. We in that time. You know? And uh, I said it in my last video. I'm going to say it now. Here it is. All this stuff is happening. And people are so... Uh, people... People are so worried about what the hell uh, is going on with the R. Kelly and the... You know what I'm saying? The, um, Jeffrey Epstein. All that nonsense. People are still worried about that. You know, when death is about to come to this door, to your doorstep. So it says, Joe Biden, we call him Butthead, today pledged to beef up U.S. military might in Europe amid growing threat of all-out war with Russia. You know, and um, for those of you who know a little bit about history, or those who just older, you know, this is the same thing that happened during um, I believe it was the, was it the Cold War era. You know. When uh basically that's that was the forming of NATO. All right, because what happened was was it Russia? You know they had uh basically America saw them as a threat. So what they did was they surrounded them, and they got all those nations around them to be on their side. So it says he confirmed the U.S. Matter of fact. Watching on TikTok now. Hi, can you record? It's crazy, bro. Hold up. Video for me, really quick. I, I can hold up. The Biden administration says the beginning of a Russian invasion is underway. The head of NATO says they have hundreds of warships standing by in the Mediterranean Sea. Things are spiraling out of control. So, how did we get here? The media explanation is basically Putin evil. But this explanation leaves out the core of the issue, which is NATO's expansion. NATO, which is short for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, was originally formed at the beginning of the Cold War as an anti-Soviet military alliance composed of the U.S. and Western European powers. Now, one might have thought that since the Soviet Union dissolved and is no longer socialist, there would no longer be a need for a NATO. But instead of disbanding, the NATO alliance actually expanded after the Cold War into several countries that were once part of the Soviet Union, although it rejected including Russia itself. For decades, basically all political figures in Russia, not just Putin, have objected to this NATO expansion as a repurposed military alliance aimed at encircling Russia. NATO claims it's a defensive alliance, but after the Cold War, NATO went on top of the governments of Yugoslavia, Afghanistan, and Libya. Given this history, Russia fears that it'll be the next target. Furthermore, mm. Russia's demand that NATO stop its expansion isn't... Reminds me of that precept in Psalm 55. You know, uh... What's that scripture? Um... His, his words were smoother than butter, but his inward thought was, uh... was. Let me just grab it. I'm about to just butcher it anyway. It says Psalms... 55 and... 20, 21, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Exactly unreasonable considering NATO countries made several promises that the NATO alliance wouldn't expand past Germany. These promises were since broken and leading U.S. national security figures openly dream of regime change inside Russia itself. Fast forward to 2013 when pro-EU protesters took aim at Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych who was playing the EU and Russia against each other and wanted Ukraine to stay out of NATO. 
After Yanukovych announced a deal with some in the opposition, the more extreme elements, led by literal armed Nazis, seized the president's palace. These protesters were openly supported by American politicians and ushered in a new far-right, anti-Russian government that aggressively sought Ukraine's membership in NATO. From Russia's perspective, you can see why this coup in Ukraine was so serious. Russia was already surrounded by NATO countries, and foreign powers invaded Russia through Ukraine in both world wars. The admission of Ukraine would mean that any future clash on Russia's border would trigger mutual defense obligations for all NATO members and essentially produce World War III. On top of that, when people in the eastern Ukrainian region called the Donbass rejected the new coup government countries, and foreign powers invaded Russia through Ukraine in both world wars. The admission of Ukraine would mean that any future clash on Russia's border would trigger mutual defense obligations for all NATO members and essentially produce World War III. On top of that, when people in the eastern Ukrainian region called the Donbass rejected the new coup government and saw closer ties with Russia, a civil war began. Fighting in Donbass has gone on for seven years and claimed over 14,000 lives. For those seven years, Russia worked to uphold the Minsk Agreement, which was supposed to deliver peace by giving the eastern part of the country autonomy. This this never happened, and the fighting escalated again, which is what brings us to today. So, whatever you think of this specific decision, the history is clear. At every step of the way, this conflict was instigated and inflamed by NATO's aggression. So, if the US and EU really want to see a peaceful resolution to the tensions in Ukraine, their first step should be to disband this relic of the Cold War. The Biden administration. That's just a little. That's just a little history, so lock it. <laughs> you know, every time you try to do a lesson, some craziness happens. That's just, that's just a little history on, um, you know, the NATO. Uh, the NATO Russia thing, you know, but um, you know, as you see, we in that time, and that spirit was always there, but now through this, but now you how about stream I was shy is really uh. You know, putting um, putting putting gasoline to the fire, so to speak. So as you see, this is like a you see the depiction of uh, NATO and Russia. You know, and what's going on over there. Now, don't be dismayed. The scriptures say all these are rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. Why? Because that RFID chip has to come to pass. And full fledged. Once that comes to pass, all right, and the elect wakes up and is sealed, this place is ripe for missiles. So it says, Joe Biden made the announcement at, at the start of a NATO summit in Madrid today. He also said an additional rotational brigade will be deployed to Romania and more air defense and other capabilities will be stationed in Germany and Italy. And Washington will enhance rotational deployments in the Baltic region right on Vladimir Putin's doorstep. Putin's allies have recently discussed invading Baltic nations amid increasingly extreme threats to nuke London and Washington. Mr. Biden pledged to make sure NATO is ready to meet threats from all directions across all domains, land, air, and sea. Putin has shattered peace in Europe, he said at the start of a NATO summit today in Madrid. We're stepping up, we're proving that NATO is more needed now than it ever has been. He said, today I'm announcing the United States will enhance our force posture in Europe and respond to the changing security environment as well as strengthening our collectively our collective security the plan boosts to troops in Poland and Romania will strengthen the alliance eastern flank on the border with Ukraine he said okay So as we see, these things are ramping up, and um, it's only a matter of time before the Most High let them arrows fly. It's only a matter of time before Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah let them arrows fly. You know, 
the nuclear missiles is written of in Revelations 18, Jeremiah 31, you know, in various precepts. So this is um uh Jeremiah 51, Salakia. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 14. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of man and put off now the weak nature. Set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee and haste thee to flee from these times. And how do you haste to flee from these times? Spiritually. Because the scriptures speak about how the whole world shall be in trouble. So how, how, how can we haste to flee where are you going to haste to if the whole world is going to be in trouble? You know, it's talking about haste and flee mentally. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. So let's get your mind right, scripture. For look how much the world shall be weaker through age, so much the more shall evils increase upon them that the well therein. Okay, so we got to be much stronger knowing what time we are. All right, and this is uh ended off here, Second Peter's chapter three verse eleven. It says, "Seeing then that all these things, it's like it, verse ten, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Why will it come as a thief in the night? Because if a standoff is happening so long, after a while." You know, you stop believing in it until somebody throws that first blow. All right, and then when that happens, it's all out. And at the same time, according to Second Ezra thirteen, which is also in the Apocrypha, it speaks about how the Lord, which the Lord must have the host of the battle, and it says in Isaiah thirteen, it speaks about how He will come and destroy Him. Okay, and um. We've been speaking of these things. Our elders been speaking. Salakia, man. That's Salakia. Our elders been speaking of these things, you know, for um for years on end. You know? <clears throat> Our elders been speaking of these things for years on end. And because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, all right, because the most high didn't take this devil out speedily. It's fully set in the hearts of men to continue on what they're doing. And basically to be asleep. To, to continue to trust in Egypt. In the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise. What's that great noise? The nuclear missiles. The scriptures say that those missiles, they're going to be, um, you know, they're going to, they're going to come. What do you say? They should be like, like horses, horsemen. Let me see if I can grab that. Joel 2 and 1. Lo ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. That's what we do by going out there on the highways and hedges. <clears throat> Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, it is near. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Because after this, there will be no more war. A fire, gener a fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Okay, because when the nukes hit, you know, it's bye-bye to that society. Yet, and nothing shall escape them. You know, because if you didn't get hit directly by the uh, nuclear explosion, guess what? You still got to worry about the fallout. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and horsemen, so shall they run. All right? And that's the shaking. You know, how they're going to run. You know, when you hear a bunch of horses, you know, running, the, the ground shakes. You know, you feel them before you hear them. 
So this is back at 2 Peter 3 and 10. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. When something that's fervent is already hot, you know? So the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. You know, hot heat, that the scriptures say in Zechariah 12, is going to melt your tongue. You know, melt your, uh, your face while you stand. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heats. So I said it twice. That fervent heat, man, ain't no joke. You know, that's that's you wouldn't talk about hell on earth. You know, be be here when them when them nukes touch down. Hey, so with that, shalom to the elect.